Good morning, dear students. Uh, today, our video is about the physical properties of matter. We did this before. I mentioned them before in the previous video. But we have here something we have to concern about. Okay. So let's move again to the physical properties. As we as we took before, physical property is a is defined as the first thing is the matter, which we saw we said before that the matter is anything that has mass and takes up space or has volume, right? So what is the pro physical property described? It is any characteristics of matter that can be observed without changing the identity of the matter. So we are just describing the thing and without changing the matter itself. What are the ways you can describe it? Maybe you can describe it by qualitative examples or quantitative examples. The qualitative examples like the color, shape, smell, taste, and the state of the matter, like solid or liquid or gas. While the quantitative examples like the mass or the volume or the density. There's two kinds of property. We, did, we sort them into two groups. The first one is the size dependent and the second one is the size independent. What does this mean? The size dependent property is a physical property that change when the size of an object change. So I'm just concerning about the size of things. So example of the size dependent like the length, width, height, volume, and mass. So we are talking about the size of the matter itself. So these properties we call them size dependent properties. While the size independent properties is the property that does not change when the size of an object change. Like what? Like the density, like the color, like the state of matter. So let's talk first about the size dependent. So we are going to talk about the mass the first thing. We took before that the mass means the amount of matter in an object. So if I'm talking about a book, the mass of the book is the amount of paper inside this book. And the base metric units, or we are using them, the units for measuring mass, is gram and kilogram. The mass does not change regardless the location where I put this thing in the mass doesn't change so if I'm having a, a, a mass of book on earth it equals the mass of this book in anything else maybe in the moon so the mass does not change according to the, the location so your mass will be the same on the moon as it is on earth and the mass is a size dependent physical property so what weight more, a pound of bricks or a pound of feather? Which one do you think so? Yes, sure, a pound of bricks. Okay, let's move to the second one, which is weight. The weight is a measure or a measurement of the force of gravity, the pull of gravity of an object. So it's measured by the unit of the weight is Newton. The weight does not change or does, do you think? Yes, the weight change because it's related to the gravity. So according to the force of gravity, the weight will change. So the weight of you will change if you move to the moon because the gravity of on, on Earth is not equal the gravity on moon. Then if we are comparing between the mass and weight, on Earth an astronaut has a mass of 80 kilogram and a weight of 784 newton on the moon the mass of the, uh, the same one is the same 80 kilogram while or since the gravity of the moon is 1 over 6 that on earth so th the weight will be 130 newton in outer space the mass of the astronauts is the same 80 kilogram but since there is no gravity or zero gravity on the in the atmosphere outside of the space, so the weight will be zero newton. So as we can see here that the mass does not change according to the location, while the gravity affected by the gravity the weight is affected by the gravity of any location it will be in. Then we will talk about the volume. The volume is the amount of space that it takes up or this object takes. 
and it call it we can sort it as a size dependent property for a liquid the volume is measured in liters and milliliters for a solids volume is measured by cubic centimeters so and you must remember that one milliliter equal one cubic centimeter so let's see this example like if I'm trying to get the volume of a regular shape box like this I have the height and the length and the width of it if the height is 8 centimeters and the length is 16 and the width is 5 so what is the volume of this box regarding to this we have a formula of the vo volume equals length times width times height so we will right 16 times 5 times 8 so the volume would be 640 centimeters or cubic centimeters and to get the volume of irregular shaped object or finding the volume of liquids cannot use the method of find the, the volume of regular we cannot get the shape like the rocks shells or marbles by measuring the width and height and length so we have to do something else so for the irregular shape object the volume is measured by using water displacement so i'm going to use the cylinder to measure the displacement of water from the first position to the second position after i add the object so we can know the actual volume of this object okay so if i'm using a graduated cylinder as you can see here we will record the initial volume of the water as you can see it's 20 okay then place an object get gently into the cylinder i will put the object then i will record the new record or the new result of the volume of water i will subtract the initial from the new one the difference between them will be the volume of this object so the volume of an object equals ending volume minus starting volume like example if i'm having 23 milliliters minus 20 milliliters so the, the volume of this object is 3 milliliters an overflow can also and graduated cylinder we have also a, an overflow can so we can measure the volume of something using a graduated cylinder and overflow can place the irregular shape object into the overflow can catch the liquid that overflows in a graduated cylinder so the volume of the liquid that is uh, in the overflow can equals the volume of the object so the amount of water which overflow to the graduated cylinder the volume of them will be the volume of this object okay so let's see this what is more than a pound of bricks or a pound of cotton ball if I put them in the water which one of them do you think it will sink and which one will float above the water yes so the more denser is the bricks for sure so what is the density and we said that the density is a size independent property because it doesn't change or, uh, as the property change so the density is the amount of mass in a given volume so a golf ball is more dense than a tennis ball the formula for density is density equals mass over volume or m over v for some units for the density like gram over cubic centimeters for solids or gram over milliliters for liquid or gram uh, over cubic centimeters equals the gram over milliliters the density is a size independent as i said if you cut an object in half then density of the object would not change so if i'm changing the shape of things so it won't change so the density is independent property so let's see this problem if i have a block of wood the mass equal 100 gram and the volume equal 25 cubic centimeter what is the density of this block of wood so we will allow or put the low which is mass over volume so the density would be 100 grams over 225 cubic centimeter which equals 4 gram per cubic centimeters and this is a diagram 
or the triangle of density we always put the three main thing in it the density the mass and volume so if we want to get the density we are going to say the mass over volume right and so on so we can use this to solve any problem otherwise so let's see this one the density of a marble is 2 gram per cubic centimeter and its mass is 10 gram what is the volume so I'm having the tri triangle here as I can so if I want to get the, the volume of thing how I will get it so the volume will be mass over density so I will put mass which is 10, 10 gram over 2 so the volume will be 5 cubic centimeters and another one after using water displacement you find that the density of a rock is 8 gram per milliliter and the volume is 21 what is the mass so I will use also this triangle so to get the mass I must multiply the density with the volume so the mass equal density multiplies by volume so 0.8 multiplying by 21 milli it, it will be 16.8 grams so the mass of this rock will be 16.8 so the density of the water is 1 gram per milliliter or 1 gram per cubic centimeter for your information any object above 1 gram will sink and any object less than 1 gram per milliliter will float above thank you for watching and study hard for the next quiz please thank you